Let's look at the question. Max consecutive ones, part two. We are given a binary array, names. If you can flip at most one zero, then return the max number of consecutive ones in this array. If you can flip at most one zero, means we are allowing at most one zero within an otherwise consecutive runs of ones. Uh, for example, the example one, we flip the first zero, we will get the max number of consecutive ones. After flipping, the max number of consecutive ones is four. If we have one zeros in our consecutive array, we could flip it to satisfy our condition. Note, we are not actually going to flip the zero, but make our approach much more easier. So, Let's start a simple and work our way up. First, I will try a brutal force solution. It usually involves trying to check every single possibility. It will look something like this. First, we check every possible consecutive sequence, and then we count how many zeros are in each sequence, and then if our sequence have one or few zeros, we should check if that is the longest consecutive sequence of ones. Oftentimes, the interviewer doesn't need to steal a code about the brute force solution, but state the brute force approach out loud and discuss their expectation. Either way, communicating proactively will give you major bonus point. And let's analyze its complexity. Let n be equal to the length of the input length array. So the time complexity is O of n squared. The nested for loop turn our approach into a quadratic solution because every index, for every index, we have to check every other index in the array. And about the space complexity, it is just O of 1 because we are using four variables, left pointer, right pointer, length, zeros, and the longest sequence. So the number of the variables are constant and they do, don't change based on the size of the input. So let's try to achieve this in the pattern. We need to get the longest uh, uh, sequence, right? Longest sequence is uh, first start initial to zero. And uh, we have a uh, two pointer, left pointer, right pointer. and. Uh, and we have uh, we need to uh, count the number names uh, zeros. Yes, start from zero to. So uh, we need for loop. We need to for loop for the right pointer in range. It will uh, traverse all the uh, array, right? And. Uh, and we put the length zeros here to keep count how many zeros inside it. And for right in range, the right is start from the left pointer to the last point to length. And uh, so inside here, uh, so the right, the right pointer will check the uh, consecutive consecutive sequence. So according to the define, we should use this to count how many zero inside it. And if it is a two, that means you should be split up because according to the description, we can allow only one well, only one zero flip uh, uh, most only one zero can flip into the uh, one. So if I, we we meet two zero, we should break up. And mm, and we should continue to count how many zero inside it by if lambs at right pointer. If it meets zeros, that means we should count how many zeros lambs uh, should increment because we just meet zeros. We just accumulate that. And uh, if lambs if lambs uh, zeros is less or equal to one. This is validated. We can only update answer only if they only if it is uh, less than the less than one. 
less than one, that means only zero, there's no zero. Uh, if it is equal to one, that means only one zero. But if it's two zero, it will automatically break it down. So only if the no zero or one zero, we can update our answer. The longest sequence is uh, continue to compare the longest uh, sequence and the right minus left. We get the, the length from it and uh, plus one. So, and then we just uh, return. Return the longest sequence. And this is we, what we want. And uh, we should uh, define find max consecutive ones self lens is a inter is a integer list and uh, return a uh, integer which is a consecutive uh, sequence longest consecutive sequence class solution and uh, indentation to indentation and uh, print solution dot find ask let's put the um, one zero one one zero zero okay let's try it for yeah it worked the naive approach works but our interviewer is not convinced let's see how can we optimize the code we just wrote the brute force solution had a time complexity of O of n square, but the bottleneck is we should check in every single consecutive sequence. Intuitively, we know we are doing repeated work because these sequences they overlapped. We have to check in consecutive sequence blindly, so we need to establish some rules on how to move how to move on our sequence forward. If our sequence is valid, let's continue expanding our sequence because our goal is to get the largest sequence as possible. If our sequence is invalid, let's stop expanding but contract our sequence because an invalid sequence will never come towards the largest sequence, right? So for expanding or contracting sequence, the pattern that comes out to my mind is like a sliding window. So, Let's define the valid and invalid state. Valid state is there's one or few zeros in our current sequence. That means there are only one zero or no zero. And uh, invalid state, that means only two zero in our current sequence. Great. How do we apply all of this to the sliding window? Let's use left and right pointers to keep track of the current sequence as we as know our window. Let's expand our window by moving the right pointer forward until we reach a point where we have more than one zero in our window. When we reach this invalid state, let's contract our window by moving the right pointer forward until we have a valid window again. By expanding and contracting our window from the valid and the invalid state, we are able to traverse the array efficiently without repeated overlapping work. Now, we can break this approach down into a three actionable steps. While our window is in the boundary of the array, add the rightmost element to our window, check if our window is invalid. If so, contract the window until valid. Update our longest sequence we have seen so far, and continue to expand our windows. Let's talk about its complexity. The time complexity is often where n is the length of the input length array. Since both pointers only move forward, each of the left or right pointer traverses a max number of n steps. Therefore, the time complexity is O of n, and about space complexity is just O of 1, the same as the previous approach, because we don't store anything other than variable. Thus, the space we use is a constant, because it is not correlated to the length of the input array.
Let's implement the algorithm into Python. First, we have to initialize uh, four variables. We have a longest uh, sequence. This is what we want. And the left pointer and right pointer, they all from they all start from zero and the lengths at zeros to count how many zeros we have and uh, so the whole the whole constructor is a uh, while uh, right is uh, less than length so make sure it in the boundary if it uh, outside the boundary it, it won't work right and every time it should uh, in the right loop, every iteration should uh, add the one to increment one every time, and uh, inside is uh, 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 when we uh, meet double zero, that means they uh, when we already meet two zero, that means it is invalidate, and we need to contract our window while uh, lamb we use this to when we meet to zero, right? Already meet to zero according to accumulate. The left is uh, need to move, is also need to move. And uh, so if, but if lambs uh, in the process of the left pointer move to the right, if it meet zero, then that means that we can decrease uh, one zero because we already used it, used it right, and uh, so, and before that we need to, if the lambs at the right is a, uh, is meet zero, we need to count zero lambs at zeros is a uh, increment by one. So every time it meet zero, it will count zero. Every time it the left the left. Uh, the, in the process of the left, left pointer move to the right, uh, if it meet zero, we, we, we can we can uh, de decrement the zero, and the longest the longest sequence is always keep uh, update to compare. The longest sequence is uh, the max of the longest is already the longest and the right the right pointer minus left and remember to plus one to get out of the length yeah so yeah so I've after finished we just uh, return uh, longest and uh, inside a class solution define find max consecutive one self lens int out return an integer and we we can print the print print the solution dot uh, find maximum and we get the output we get the input data yeah it's work it, it is four it is like this right yeah, we did it.